Lord John of Gaunt, time-honored Lancaster, hast thou, according to thy oath and band, brought hither Henry Bolingbroke, thy bold son, here to make good the boisterous late appeal against the Duke of Norfolk, Thomas Mowbray? I have, my liege. Tell me, moreover, hast thou sounded him, if he appealed the Duke on ancient malice, or worthily, as a good subject should, on some known ground of treachery in him? As near as I could sift him on that argument, on some apparent danger seen in him aimed at your highness. Then call them to our presence, face to face and frowning brow to brow. Ourselves will hear the accuser and the accused freely speak. Many years of happy days befall my gracious sovereign, my most loving liege. Each day still better others' happiness, until the heavens and being earth's good hap add an immortal title to your crown. <laughs> we thank you both. Yet one but flatters us, as well appears by the cause you come, namely to appeal each other of high treason. Cousin Hereford, what dost thou object against the Duke of Norfolk, Thomas Mowbray? First, heaven be the record to my speech. In the devotion of a subject's love, tendering the precious safety of my prince. Now, Thomas Mowbray, do I turn to thee. Thou art a traitor and a miscreant. Once more, the more to aggravate the note, with a foul traitor's name, stuff I thy throat, and wish, so please my sovereign, ere I move, what my tongue speaks, my right-drawn sword may prove. Let not my cold words here accuse my zeal. I do defy him, and I spit at him. Call him a slanderous coward and a villain. Pale, trembling coward, there I throw my gauge. I take it up, and by that sword I swear I'll answer thee in any fair degree or chivalrous design of knightly trial. How oh, high a pitch is resolution, source. Wrath kindled, gentlemen, be ruled by me. Let's purge this collar without letting blood. This we prescribe, though no physician. Deep malice makes too deep incision. Forget, forgive, conclude, and be agreed. A doctor says this is no month to bleed. Mm. Rage must be withstood. Lions make leopards tame. Yea, but not change his spots. We were born not to sue, but to command. Which, since we cannot do to make you friends, be ready, as your lives shall answer it, at Coventry upon Lambert's day. There shall your swords and lances arbitrate the swelling difference of your settled hate. Command our officers at arms. Be ready to direct these home alarms. O oh, Mayor. Demand of yonder champion the cause of his arrival here in arms. Ask him his name and orderly proceed to swear him in the justice of his cause. In God's name and the king's, say who thou art and why thou comest thus knightly clad in arms. Against what man thou comest and what thy quarrel. Speak truly on thy knighthood and thy oath, as so defend thee heaven and thy valor. My name is Thomas Mowbray, Duke of Norfolk who hither come engaged by my oath, both to defend my loyalty and truth to God, my king and my succeeding issue against whole Henry Bolingbroke that appeals me. O Merrill, ask yonder knight in arms, both who he is and why he cometh hither, thus plated in habiliments of war, and formally, according to our law, depose him in the justice of his cause. What is thy name? And wherefore comest thou hither before King Richard in his royal lists? Against whom comest thou? And what's thy quarrel? Speak like a true knight, so defend thee heaven. Harry of Hereford, Lancaster and Derby am I, who ready here do stand in arms to prove, by God's grace and my body's valor, in lists on Thomas Mowbray, Duke of Norfolk, that he is a traitor, foul and dangerous, to God of heaven, King Richard, and to me. And as I truly fight, defend me, heaven. Sound, trumpets. 
and set forward, combatants. Stay. The king has thrown his water down. Let them lay by their helmets and their spears and both return back to their chairs again. Withdraw with us and let the trumpet sound while we return these dukes what we decree. Draw near and list what with our counsel we have done for that our kingdom's earth shall not be soiled with that dear blood which it has fostered. Therefore, we banish you our territories. You, cousin Bolingbroke, upon pain of life, till twice five summers have enriched our fields, shall not regret their fair dominions, but tread the stranger paths of banishment. Your will be done. This must my comfort be. Sun that warms you here shall shine on me, and those his golden beams to you here lent shall point on me and gild my banishment. Mowbray, for thee remains a heavier doom, which I, with some unwillingness, pronounce. The sly, slow hours shall not determinate the dateless limit of thy dear exile. The hopeless word of never to return, breathe I against thee upon pain of life. A heavy sentence, my most sovereign liege, and all unlooked for from your highness mouth. Then thus I turn me from my country's light to dwell in solemn shades of endless night. Return again and take an oath with thee. Lay on our royal sword your banished hands. Swear by the duty that you owe to God, our part therein we banish with yourselves to keep the oath that we administer. I swear and I to keep all this. Uncle, even in the glasses of thine eyes I see thy grieved heart. Thy sad aspect hath from the number of his banished years plucked four away. Six frozen winters spent return with welcome home from banishment. How long a time lies in one little word. Four lagging winters and four wanton springs end in a word. Such is the breath of kings. I thank my liege that in regard of me, he shortens four years of my son's exile. But little advantage shall I reap thereby, for ere the six years that he hath to spend can change their moons and bring their times about. And my oil-dried lamp and time-bewasted light shall be extinct with age and endless night. <laughs> my inch of taper will be burnt and done. And blindfold death not let me see my son. My uncle, thou hast many years to live. <laughs> but not a minute, king, that thou canst to give. Thy son is banished upon good advice. Why at our justice seemest thou then to lower? I think sweet in taste prove in digestion sour. You urged me as a judge, but... I had rather you would have bid me argue like a father. Cousin, farewell. An uncle bid him so. Six years we banish him and he shall go. We did observe, Cousin O'Narrow, how far brought you high Hereford on his way? I brought high Hereford, if you could call him so, but to the next highway and there I left him. And say, what store of parting tears were shed? Faith, none for me, except the northeast wind which blew bitterly against our faces, awake the sleeping room, and so by chance did grace our hollow parting with a tear. What did our cousin say when you parted with him? Farewell. Hmm. He is our cousin, cousin. 
But tis doubt when time shall call him home from banishment, whether our kinsman comes to see his friends. Ourself has observed his courtship to the common people. Though he did seem to dive into their hearts with humble and familiar courtesy, what reverence he did throw away on slaves, wooing poor craftsmen with the craft of smile. Off goes his bonnet to an oyster wench. A brace of draymen bid him Godspeed and had the tribute of his supple knee. With thanks, countrymen, my loving friends, as were our England in reversion his, and he our subjects next degree in hope. Well, he is gone, and with him go these thoughts. Now for the rebels which stand out in Ireland. Expedient manage must be made, my liege, ere further ye leisure yield them further means for their advantage in your highness' laws. We will ourselves in person to this war, for we will make to Ireland presently. Old John of Gaunt is grievous sick, my lord, suddenly taken, and hath sent post haste to entreat your majesty to visit him. Where lies he? At Eli House. Now put it, God, in the physician's mind to help him to his grave immediately. The lining of his coffers shall make coats to deck our soldiers for these Irish wars. Come, gentlemen, let's all go visit him. Pray God we make haste and come too late. Amen. For young cults being raged do rage the more. <clears throat> How fares our noble uncle, Lancaster? What comfort, man, how is't with aged gaunt? Oh, how that name befits my composition. Old gaunt indeed. And gaunt in being old, gaunt am I for the grave. Gaunt as a grave, whose holy womb inherits naught but bones. Can sick men play so nicely with their names? No. Misery makes sport to mock itself. Since thou dost seek to kill my name in me, I mock my name, great king, to flatter thee. Should dying men flatter with those that live? No, no. Men living flatter those that die. Thou, now a dying, sayest thou flatterest me. Oh, no. Thou diest, though I the sicker be. I am in health. I breathe, I see thee ill. Now, he that made me knows I see thee ill. Ill in myself to see, and in thee seeing ill. And thy land, wherein thou liest in reputation sick, and thou to careless patient as thou art, commits thy anointed body to the cure of those physicians that first wounded thee. A thousand flatterers sit within thy crown, whose compass is no bigger than thy head. Why, cousin, wert thou regent of the world? It were a shame to let this land by lease. Landlord of England art thou now, not king. Thy state of law is bond slave to the law, and thou... A <laughs> lunatic, lean-witted fool, presuming on an ague's privilege, darest, with thy frozen admonition, make pale our cheek, chasing the royal blood with fury from his native residence. Live in thy shame, but die not shame with thee. These words hereafter thy tormentors be. Oh, convey me to my bed and to my grave. <laughs> love thee to live that love and honor have. And let them die that age and sullens have, for both hast thou, and both become the grave. I do beseech your majesty, impute his words to wayward sickliness and age in him. He loves you on my life and hold you dear right you say true my liege 
Old Gaunt commends him to your majesty. What says he? Nay, nothing. All is said. His tongue is now a stringless instrument. <clears throat> Words, life, and all old Lancaster hath spent. The ripest fruit first falls, and so doth he. His time is spent. Our pilgrimage must be. So much for that. Now, for our Irish wars, towards our assistance we do seize to us the plate, corn, revenues, and movables, whereof our Uncle Gaunt did stand possessed. How long shall I be patient? Oh, how long shall tender duty make me suffer wrong? My uncle, what's the matter? Oh, my liege. Seek you to seize and gripe into your hands the royalties and rights of banished Bolingbroke? Is not Gaunt dead? And doth not Bolingbroke live? Was Gaunt not just? And is not Harry true? Did not the one deserve to have an heir? Is not his heir a well-deserving son? If you do wrongfully seize Bolingbroke's rights, you pluck a thousand dangers on your head. You lose a thousand well-disposed hearts and prick my tender patience to those thoughts which honor and allegiance cannot think. Think what you will. We seize into our hands his plate, his goods, his money, and his lands. I'll not be by the while, my leech. Farewell. What will ensue hereof, there's none can tell. But by bad courses may be understood that their events can never fall out of <clears throat> good. Tomorrow next, we will for Ireland. And tis time, I trow. And we create, in absence of ourself, our uncle york lord governor of england for he is just and always loved us well come on our queen tomorrow we must part be merry for our time of stay is short our gladly castle call they this at hand yea my lord what brooks your grace the air after your late tossing on the breaking sea <sighs> Needs must I like it well. I weep for joy to stand upon my kingdom once again. Dear Earth, I do salute thee with my hand. The rebels wound thee with their horses' hooves. This Earth shall have a feeling, and these stones prove armed soldiers ere her native king shall falter under foul rebellion's arms. Fear not, my lord. That power that made you king hath power to keep you king in spite of all. The means that heaven yields must be embraced and not neglected. I mean, my lord, that we are too remiss. Will Spallingbrook grow strong and great in substance and in power? So when this thief, this traitor, Bolingbroke, who all this while hath reveled in the night whilst we were wandering with the Antipodes, shall see us rising in our throne, the East. His treasons will sit blushing in his face, not able to endure the sight of day, but self-affrighted tremble at his sin. <laughs> not all the water in the rough, rude sea can wash the balm off an anointed king. The breath of worldly men cannot depose the deputy elected by the Lord. For every man that Bolingbroke hath pressed to lift shrewd steel against our golden crown, God, for his Richard, hath in heavenly pay a glorious angel. Then if angels fight, weak men must fall, for heaven still guards the right. Welcome, my lord. How far off lies your power? One day too late, I fear me, noble lord hath clouded all thy happy days on earth. Oh, 
called back yesterday. Big time return, and thou shalt have twelve thousand fighting men. Today, today, unhappy day, too late, o'erthrows thy joys, friends, fortune, and thy state. For all the Welshmen, hearing thou wert dead, are gone to Bolingbroke, dispersed and fled. Comfort, my liege. Why looks your grace so pale? But now the blood of 20,000 men did triumph in my face, and they are fled. Have I not reason to look pale and dead? Comfort, my liege. Remember who you are. <sighs> I had forgot myself. <laughs> Am I not king? Awake, awake, thou coward majesty, thou sleepest. Is not the king's name 20,000 names? Arm, um, arm my name. A puny subject strikes at thy great glory. Look not to the ground, ye favorites of a king. Are we not high? High be our thoughts. I know my uncle York hath power enough to serve our turn. Say, is my kingdom lost? was my care and what loss is it to be rid of care strides Bolingbroke to be as great as we greater he will not be if he serve God we'll serve him too and be his fellow so revolt our subjects that we cannot mend they break their faith to God as well as us Cry, woe, destruction, ruin, and decay, the worst is death. And death will have his day. Glad am I that your highness is so armed to bear the tidings of calamity. So high above his limits swells the rage of Bolingbroke, covering your fearful land with hard, bright steel, and hearts harder than steel. White beards have armed their thin and hairless scalps against thy majesty. Boys with women's voices strive to speak big and clap their female joints in stiff, unwieldy arms against thy crown. The very beadsmen born to bend their bows of double fated you against thy state. Yea, Dist of women manage rusty bills against thy seat. Both young and old rebel. And all goes worse than I have power to tell. Too well. Too well thou tellest a tale so ill. Where is the Earl of Wiltshire? Where is Bagot? What has become of Bushy? Where is Green? That they have let the dangerous enemy measure our confines with such peaceful steps? Oh, if we prevail, their heads shall pay for it. I warrant they have made peace with Wallingbroke. A peace have they made with him indeed. <sighs> Villains, vipers, damned without redemption, dogs easily won to fawn on any man, snakes in my heart blood warm that sting my heart. Three Judases. Each one thrice worse than Judas, would they make peace? Again, uncurse their souls. Their peace is made with heads and not with hands. Those whom you curse have felt the worst of death's destroying wound and lie full low, graved in the hollow ground. Is Bushy, Green, and the Earl of Wiltshire dead? I... I all of them at Bristol lost their heads. Where is the Duke, my father, with his power? No matter where. Of comfort, no man speak. Let's talk of graves, of worms and epitaphs. 
make dust our paper and with rainy eyes write sorrow on the bosom of the earth. Let's choose executors and talk of wills. And yet not so. For what can we bequeath save our deposit bodies to the ground? Our lands, our lives, and all our bowling brooks. For God's sake, let us sit upon the ground and tell sad stories of the death of kings. How some have been deposed, some slain in war, some haunted by the ghosts they have deposed, some poisoned by their wives, some sleeping, killed, all murdered. But within the hollow crown that rounds the mortal temples of the king, keeps death his court. And there the antic sits, scoffing his state and craning at his pomp, allowing him a breath, a little scene to monarchize, be feared and kill with looks, infusing him with self and vain conceit as if this flesh which walls about our life were brass impregnable and humored thus comes at the last and with a little pin pours through his castle wall and farewell king for you have mistook me all this while I live with bread like you, feel want, taste, grief, need friends. Subjected thus, how can you say to me I am a king? My father hath a power. Inquire of him and learn to make a body of a limb. Now chidest me well. Proud Bolingbroke, I come to change blows with thee for our day of doom. (laughs) This ague fit of fear is overblown, an easy task it is to win our own. Say, Scroop, where lies our uncle with his power? Speak sweetly, man, although thy looks be sour. My tongue hath but a heavier tale to say. I play the torturer. I small and small to lengthen out the worst that must be spoken. Your uncle York is joined with Bolingbroke. And all your northern castles yielded up. And all your southern gentlemen in arms upon his party. I said enough. What say you now? What comfort have we now? By heaven, I'll hate him everlastingly that bids me of comfort any more. Go to Flint's castle, there I'll pine away. A king, woe slave, shall kingly woe obey. My liege, one word. He does me doubly wrong that wounds me with the flatteries of his tongue. Discharge my followers, let them hence away from Richard's knight. To Bolingbroke's fair day. See, see, King Richard doth himself appear, as doth the blushing discontented of the sun from out the fiery portal of the east. When he perceives the envious clouds are bent to dim his glory and to stain the track of his bright passage to the Occident. <laughs> Yet looks he like a king. You hold his eye, as bright as is it, the eagle's lightens forth controlling majesty. Alack, alack, for woe, that any harm should stain so fair a show. We are amazed, and thus long have we stood to watch the fearful bending of thy knee, because we thought ourself thy lawful king. And if we be, how dare thy joints forget to pay their awful duty to our presence? If we be not, show us 
the hand of God that hath dismissed us from our stewardship. Yet no, my master, God omnipotent, is mustering in his clouds on our behalf armies of pestilence, and they shall strike your children yet unborn and unbegot that lift your vassal hand against my head and threat the glory of my precious crown. Tell Bolingbroke, for yond methinks he stands, that every stride he makes upon my land is dangerous treason. He has come to open the purple testament of bleeding war. Thy thrice noble cousin, Harry Bolingbroke, doth humbly kiss thy hand. His coming hither hath no further scope than for his lineal royalties and to beg enfranchisement immediate on his knees. Northumberland, say thus the king returns. His noble cousin is right welcome hither, and all the number of his fair demands shall be accomplished without contradiction. With all the gracious utterance thou hast, speak to his gentle hearing kind commands. We do debase ourselves, cousin, do we not? To look so poorly and to speak so fair. Shall we call back Northumberland and send defiance to the traitor and so die? No good, my lord. Let's fight with gentle words till time lends friends and friends their helpful swords. O oh God, O oh God, that ere this tongue of mine that laid the sentence of dread banishment on yon proud man should take it off again with words of sooth. Oh, that I were as great as is my grief or lesser than my name, or that I could forget what I have been, or not remember what I must be now. Northumberland comes back from Bolingbroke. What must the king do now? Hmm? Must he submit? The king shall do it. Must he be deposed? The king shall be deposed. King shall be contented. Must he lose the name of king? Oh, God's name. Let it go. I'll give my jewels for a set of beads. My gorgeous palace for a hermitage. My gay apparel for an almsman's crown. My figured goblets for a dish of wood, my scepter for a palmer's walking staff, my subjects for a pair of carved saints, and my large kingdom for a little grave, a little, little grave an obscure grave or I'll be buried in the king's highway some some way of common trade where subjects feet may hourly trample on their sovereign said for on my heart they tread now whilst I live and buried once why not upon my head most mighty prince my lord Northumberland, what says King Bolingbroke? Will his majesty give Richard leave to live till Richard die? You make a leg, and Bolingbroke says I. My lord, in the base court he doth attend to speak with you. May it please you to come down. Down. Down I come like glistering phaeton in the base court base court where kings grow base to come at traitors calls and do them grace in the base court come down down court down king for night owls shriek where mounting larks should sing 
What says his majesty? Sorrow and grief of heart makes him speak fondly like a frantic man. Yet he is come. Stand all apart and show fair duty to his majesty. My gracious lord. Fair cousin, you debase your princely need to make the base earth proud with kissing it. Up, cousin, up. Your heart is up, I know. Thus high, at least, although your knee be low. My gracious lord, I come but for mine own. Your own is yours, and I am yours, and all. So far be mine, my most redoubted lord, as my true service shall deserve your love. Well, you deserve. They well deserve to have that know the strongest and surest way to get. What you will have, I'll give, and willing to. For we must, what force will have us do. Set on to London, cousin, is it so? Yea, my good lord. Then I must not say no. Alack, why am I sent for to a king before I have shook off the royal thoughts wherein I reigned? I hardly yet have learned to insinuate, flatter, bow, and bend my limbs, give sorrow leave a while to tutor me to this submission. Yet, well, I remember the favors of these men. Were they not mine? Did they not sometimes cry, all hail to me? So Judas did to Christ. But he in 12 found truth in all but one, and I in 12,000. None. God save the king. <laughs> Will no man say amen? Am I both priest and clerk? Well then, amen. God save the king. Although I be not he, and yet amen, if heaven do think him me. To what service am I sent for hither? To do that office of thine own good will, which tired majesty did make thee offer. The resignation of thy state and crown to Henry Bolingbroke. Give me the crown. Here. Cousin. Seize the crown. Here, cousin, on this side my hand, and on that side yours. I thought you had been willing to resign. My crown I am, but still my griefs are mine. You may my glories and my state depose, but not my griefs. Still I am king of those. Part of your cares you give me with your crown. Your care is set up, do not pluck my cares down. Your care is loss of care by old care done. Your care is gain of care by new care won. The cares I give, I have. Though given away, they tend the crown. Yet still with me they stay. Are you contented to resign the crown? I. No. No, I, for I must nothing be, therefore no, no, for I resign to thee. Now mark me, how I will undo myself. I give this heavy weight from off my head, and this unwieldy scepter from my hand, the pride of kingly sway from out my heart, with mine own tears, I wash away my bomb. With mine own hands, I give away my crown. 
with mine own tongue deny my sacred state with mine own breath release all duties rights all pomp and majesty i do forswear my manners rents revenues i forego my acts decrees and statutes i deny god pardon all oaths that are broke to me god keep all vows unbroke that swear to thee long mayst thou live in richard's seat to sit and soon lie richard in an earthly pit god save king harry unkinged richard says and send him many years of sunshine days what more remains no more but that you read these accusations and these grievous crimes committed by your person and your followers against the state and prophet of this land that by confessing them the souls of men may deem that you are worthily deposed must i do so my lord dispatch read all these articles mine eyes are full of tears i cannot see and yet salt water blinds them not so much but they can see a sort of traitors here nay if i turn mine eyes upon myself i find myself a traitor with the rest for i have given here my soul's consent to undeck the pompous body of a king my lord the yeah. lord of thine thou high insulting man nor nor no man's lord i have no name no title no not that name that was given me at the font but tis usurped alack the heavy day that i have worn so many winters out and not know now what to call myself oh that i was a mockery of snow standing before the sun of bolingbroke to melt myself in water drops let you command a mirror hither straight that it may show me what a face i have since it is bankrupt of his majesty go some of you and fetch a looking glass read all this paper while the glass doth come fiend thou tormentest me ere i come to hell urge it no more my lord northumberland the commons will not then be satisfied they shall be satisfied i'll read enough when i do see the very book indeed where all my sins are writ and that's myself give me the glass and therein will i read no deeper wrinkles yet has sorrow struck so many blows upon this face of mine and made no deeper wounds flattering glass like to my followers in prosperity thou dost beguile me was this the face the face that under every day under his household roof did keep 10,000 men was this the face that like the sun did make beholders wink was this the face that faced so many follies and was at last outfaced by Bolingbroke? A brittle glory shineth in this face. As brittle as the glory is the face. <laughs> there it is, cracked in a hundred shivers. Mark, silent king. The moral of this sport how soon my sorrow hath destroyed my face the shadow of your sorrow hath destroyed the shadow of your face say that again the shadow of my sorrow huh, let's see 
Tis very true. My grief lies all within, and I thank thee, King, for thy great bounty that not only givest me cause to will, but teachest me the way how to lament the cause. I'll beg one boon, and then be gone in trouble you no more shall I obtain it. Name it, fair cousin. Fair cousin. I am greater than a king. For when I was a king, my flatterers were then but subjects. Being now a subject, I have a king here to my flatterer. <laughs> Being so great, I have no need to beg. Yet ask. You shall. Then give me leave to go. Whither? Whither you will, so I were from your sights. Go. Some of you convey him to the tower. Oh, good. Convey. Conveyors are you all. Thus rise, thus nimbly, by a true king's fall. See my fair rose wither. Yet look up. Behold that you in pity may dissolve to do and wash him fresh again with true love tears. Join not with grief, fair woman, do not so. To make my end too sudden, learn good soul. To think our former state a happy dream. Hie thee to France and cloister thee in some religious house. What? Is my Richard both in shape and mind transformed and weakened? Hath Bolingbroke deposed thine intellect? Hath he been in thine heart? The lion dying thrusteth forth his paw and wounds the earth, if nothing else with rage to be o'erpowered. And wilt thou, pupil-like, take thy correction mildly, kiss the rod, and fawn on rage with base humility, which art a lion and a king of beasts? A king of beasts, indeed. If aught but beasts, I had still been a happy king of men. Good sometime queen, prepare thee hence for France. Think I am dead. And that even here thou takest as from my deathbed thy last living leave. In winter's tedious nights, sit by the fire with good old folks and let them tell thee tales of the deposing of a rightful king. My lord, the mind of Bolingbroke is changed. You must to Pomfret, not unto the tower. And madam, there's all attained for you. With all swift speed, you must away to France. Northumberland, thou ladder wherewithal the mounting Bolingbroke ascends my throne. The time shall not be many hours of age. Thou shalt think, though he divide the realm and give thee half, it is too little, helping him to all. And he shall think that thou, which knowest the way to plant unrightful kings, wilt know again another way to pluck him headlong from the usurped throne. The love of wicked men converts to fear, that fear to hate, and hate turns one or both to worthy danger and deserved death. My guilt be on my head, and there an end. Now take leave and part, for you must part forthwith. Doubly divorced. Bad men, you violate a twofold marriage. Twixt my crown and me, and then betwixt me and my married wife. Part us, Northumberland. I toward the north, my wife toward France. And must we be divided? Must we part? I, hand from hand, my love, and heart from heart. Banish us both and send the king with me. Oh, that was some love, but little policy. Then whither he goes, the thither let me go. 
so two, together weeping, make one woe. Weep thou for me and friends. I for thee here. Go, count thy way with sighs, I mine with groans. Twice for one step I'll groan, the way being short, and piece the way out with a heavy heart. One kiss shall stop our mouths and dumbly part. Thus give I mine, and thus take I thy heart. We make what wanton with this fond delay. Once more, adieu. The rest let sorrow say. I have been studying how I may compare this prison where I live unto the world. And for because the world is so populous and here is not a creature but myself, I cannot do it. Yet I'll I'll hammer it out. My brain, I'll prove the female to my soul, my soul, the father, and these two beget a generation of still breeding thoughts. And these same thoughts people this little world in humors like the people of this world. For no thought is content. The better thought, as thoughts of things divine, are intermixed with scruples and do set the word itself against the word. Thus play I in one person many people and none contented. Sometimes I am king. The treasons make me wish I were a beggar. And so I am. Then crushing penury persuades me I was better when a king. Then I am king again. And by and by, think that I am unkinged by Bolingbroke. And straight, I am nothing. But where I be, nor I, nor any man that but man is, with nothing shall be pleased, till he be eased with being nothing. Thank you.